In the early hours of November 30th, 1989, at approximately 3 a.m., Linda and her husband were sleeping in their 12-story Manhattan high-rise apartment. Linda claims she was awoken by great aliens standing at the foot of her bed. She sensed that the beings were telepathically telling her to be quiet. Linda can recall being paralyzed and unable to talk but fully conscious. She describes that a beam of light lifted her body as she began to levitate out of her apartment window while her husband was sound asleep. Linda stated that she could see the New York skyline below her as she entered a clam-like alien vessel. Jeez, you had the longest day ever. Come, you come here to the bed and you're complaining already. Hi, welcome to LOL Funny Factory. Before we get into it, please like and subscribe and let us know what funny bit you like us to upload next. Enjoy. This is no dream. Here she is floating over the New York skyline. Linda claims that she is being pulled towards a giant UFO. The surrounding neighborhood experiences a major power outage. And not just in the buildings, but on the street also. Cars were dying right in the middle of the street. Her doctors found a small metal object in her skull shortly after her abduction. Linda Cortilla's nasal cavity, I'll show you a more of a close up. A small object, which she recalled going in on the end of a needle. She had a scar there, and she remembered it as a round thing, but somehow it's as if it expanded once it was inside her nostril. And once the x-rays were taken, uh, a couple of days later she woke up bleeding from the right nostril. There was nothing there anymore when we had a re-x-rayed and there was a little cut where it had been. It's as if they somehow know what happened. But this story cannot be easily dismissed because the files report that one year after the incident, two surprise witnesses come forward. Bud Hopkins receives a letter from two individuals, Richard and Dan. They claim to have witnessed the abduction of Linda. Hopkins very disoriented and embarrassed. This is what he said to me. Richard and Dan identify themselves as New York City police officers who were providing private security for a VIP client at the time of Linda's abduction. The men described the exact same story that Linda experienced. But the case takes a bizarre turn when the men reportedly reveal the identity of their VIP client. At the time, Javier Perez de Cuellar is the Secretary General of the United Nations. The other two witnesses had already told Bud Hopkins that the third man was traumatized by what he had seen that night. Maybe because of his high level position, he didn't know where to turn. According to reports, Bud Hopkins reaches out to Javier Perez de Cuellar. Secretary General Javier Perez de Cuellar has never acknowledged this story. A recent podcast by Brian Sprigg. Somewhere in the skies, a guest he had on the show, the Brooklyn Bridge UFO abduction episode. Fellow guest, Peter Robbins, who is a former assistant to Bud Hopkins, claims that Hopkins and DeCuliar briefly met and had an agreement that he did indeed witness the events with Miss Napolitano's abduction. However, Javier Perez stated that he would not come forward with the account from that night on November 30th, 1989. According to a article, Skeptics UFO Newsletter, Javier Perez had been abducted along with Napolitano, but no one should contact him about this because the UN was working with aliens to end the Cold War. Here is an interview with Peter Robbins on the show. Somewhere in the sky. Spring of 1989, Bud received a letter from a woman who was a lifelong New Yorker, uh, lived downtown in the same neighborhood she grew up in, mother, uh, married, um, high school education, um, Italian American. I read the letter first. Um, I read and responded to thousands of pieces of mail over the years, and Bud was very old school. Well, around Thanksgiving of that year, that she actually um, came and met with Bud for the first time, and he began to really research the subject with her, 
and we began to see things some of them for the first time in terms of what became patterns because we had never thought or knew to look at them like in the case of two adults who as children were brought together in a neutral space repeatedly as young kids and who later may have discovered each other in life consciously not recognizing that that was the thing that drew them to each other um, the Linda case that became known as the Brooklyn Bridge UFO abduction case a woman on the Brooklyn Bridge driving home from a retirement party of a friend observing this glowing light and seeing this and wondering obviously it's a movie being made but how are they creating the special effect somebody on the West Side Highway I think he must have received at least a dozen letters with carefully done drawings downtown at the time with two security people was a very important diplomat um, once Bud had established who it was it seemed so outrageous that the book does not mention who it was it became an open secret and now is pretty much public knowledge that it was Perez de Cuellar who at the time was the Secretary General of the United Nations so one reason the case is considered controversial is yeah right please give me a break the Secretary General of the United Nations was downtown at 2 in the morning why well he may have had a romantic liaison he's a married man um, he was in a very important diplomatic internationally diplomatic position be that as it may Bud ultimately met with Perez de Cuello. It was in um, an executive lounge at O'Hare Airport in Chicago that was prearranged through um, de Cuello's office, who obviously wanted to meet with Bud, but gave him a certain of out amount of information, but asked him a series of questions, none of which he denied, because he was involved in an abduction that Linda was. And this world important leader were also abducted that night right along with Linda Cortilla. The debunker's attack on this, of course, is that the whole thing is uh, a gigantic hoax involving maybe 20 people. Linda would have to be paying these people all off to make up all these stories. They would all have to be trained, uh, you know, at, at, at the night of the whole thing. We have sat and talked at length about what happened to her. I have absolute confidence in her truthfulness. And the woman on the bridge, the drawing she made. And the two security men who were with them, one of these men became obsessed with Linda. Obsessed. And that obsession was rooted in what Linda was had to acknowledge at a certain point as we developed the material. Oh my God. They were only two blocks away, and they were sitting under the FDR drive in their car, and they used um, binoculars. And uh, that's how they identified me, because they realized they knew what building and window that I came out of. The other security man ultimately became completely unwound emotionally, and he disappeared off any ability to trace him. Whether he was institutionalized or just removed from the case and disallowed to communicate or not alive, I have no idea. And during that time, I met regularly with Linda, who became a good friend, as well as somebody who I felt somewhat protective of and who I was convinced had gone through what she alleged she had gone through. I still stay in touch with Linda, who... Um, you know, still stands absolutely rock solid on everything that happened to her. Live and learn. I would just close by saying yeah. I encourage everybody to read that book. Witnessed the true story of the Brooklyn Bridge UFO abductions. <laughs> and then come to their own best conclusions. Hey guys, tell me what you think. Do you think this case is legit? I think it's possible it could be real. And possible it could be just a hoax. Well, what do you think? Leave a comment down below and let me know what's your opinion. Thank you and good night. I tried to wake my husband. Eyes still closed and there was no response from my husband. And that's when I did open my eyes and I looked straight ahead. 
and there was this thing, this creature, standing at the foot of my bed. And it was the first time I had ever seen that consciously. I was awake. I hadn't gone to sleep yet. I was saying my prayers. Uh, and um, so by this time, my legs were numb. And uh, I sat up in bed, dragging my heavy legs with me, and turned up behind me and threw a pillow, a big pillow, uh, that I made. You would think that I stuck them with rock, it was heavy. And I hit him too, that creature. And uh, my next conscious memory, uh, fragmented memory, was um, seeing white fabric flow up and over my eyes and then down again. And then I felt something, perhaps a little fist or maybe an instrument, pounding on my back. And, uh, and that was all I remembered. And then my next conscious memory was that of falling into my bed. I could have fallen anywhere from two inches up or two feet up or whatever, but I was conscious and I felt myself falling into bed.